transitional house and the uh, community house and that this should be a model that everybody should be doing in every neighborhood you know if you have a neighborhood association you should have a, a place for children in that community and even the blocks you know we have all of these uh, uh, houses that are abandoned that is one of the solutions is instead of having lawns grow food you know instead of having uh, these abandoned properties you can actually put an aquaponic system and that system can actually pay for the house and so the idea of uh, having a, a resident that is dedicated to this idea of an entrepreneurial uh, uh, a way of life is what is important you know this has been you know a, a, a transforming aspect of this block in that uh, I remember when I first came here you know, there was a lot of cars speeding by, and there were no children out. You know, most of them were probably inside playing video games. But these, but we put out a basketball court, and the kids just came from nowhere. I saw little four-year-olds running over, you know, telling the mama, I want to go over there and play with these kids, and coming over, you know, they got little treats, snacks, you know, uh, uh, some juice, and, you know, I, I can engage them with, uh, you know, lesson plans on, on, you know, with literacy and other kinds of pursuits. And, you know, these kids just, they eat this up. Uh, you know, they just, to me, I think about the long-term effect of these children, uh, what they'll be able to testify saying, well, when I was a kid, I remember Bishop Caldwell, I remember Brother Saste, Brother Ant, and what they did and the things that they said in their life. You know, you don't often see uh, males, uh, African American male, males in, in particular, in a leadership role or in a role where they're consciously engaged with children and, and family. And just having that nucleus of male uh, role models. We also have uh, a brother Mike Watkins, and he does. Uh, martial arts training and so just he's had a history of working with the community and so having an elder having young people having uh, young male men that that, ha that are fathers themselves actually mentoring young people and you know they come to them not only for the snacks but they a they actually get advice they actually have you know we've had domestic concerns where people are fighting among each other and you know we are peacekeepers so we actually act has have uh, gone out to the community it, uh, to the neighbors in the community and actually work with them as far as allying and providing counseling uh, and the connection of having a community center like this uh, right across the street from a transitional house uh, these people are in most cases homeless they're able to you know have a refuge uh, for temporary housing until they can get on their feet and come over to the community center they learn about com computers uh, they are able to fill out application forms for jobs uh, they're able to have counseling for for uh, uh, drug counseling and other kinds of issues that they might be having but just having that long-term support we actually have members who have gone to the transitional center come back and say I'm, I'm doing well now you know there was a one young guy he was a rapper and he got a contract while he was at the transitional center to be to work in a, uh, as a motorcycle uh, enthusiast uh, well he actually does a, a stunts for, for a motorcycle. And so his career was launched while he was at a transitional house. And so we never, we, we can't underestimate the potential of the lives and the people that we're touching, you know, in our community. There was something you mentioned when you were talking about the farm, uh, the phrase three sisters, what is that? Well, the three sisters are actually, uh, uh, you know, to me, uh, uh, one of my, um, prime uh, uh, food sources that we grow on the farm. It's three uh, uh, primary crops that are indigenous to America, corn, beans, and squash. Uh, those were the main stays of, of Native American people. Uh, my husband and I are, you know, half Native, Native American. And so we, we wanted to grow something that was indigenous to this area. Uh, you grow, you start with the corn, you, you plant the corn in the, and, and it starts to grow and it becomes of course a stalk and 
you know, that becomes also a bean pole. So you plant a, a bean right next to that corn stalk. The beans got to go around that corn stalk and use it as a bean pole. And then you have the squash, which will be ground cover. So you don't have to do any weeding. It's going to sustain moisture into the soil and keep it moist. And so it's a harmony of three different plants growing at the same time and supporting one another. And then eating that, uh, I don't know if you've heard of succotash, mm -hmm. but you know, you know, the lima beans and the corn, that mixture uh, is, is what we call succotash, but it's a complete, you have a complete protein, you have the minerals and vitamins that could sustain you over the winter. And of course you could store up uh, and uh, freeze and preserve those foods. Now, where is the farm? Do you like sell food? What do you... We actually took uh, a, pro a piece of property and right next to it I had a vacant lot and we, we call that the Amin Parank Urban Farm. Um, it's right up the street from uh, uh, Central High School. Uh, 29, uh, 31 Askew, you, you know, is in close proximity to 3641 Bales. So we're like four blocks away from Central High School, and we just we we have our home and we have the the lot next door. Uh, I dug up the front yard and put herbs in, primarily in there. I put sage and thyme and rosemary, and then I grew cruciferous vegetables, which are the cabbage family. So I have uh, purple cabbage, which I thought was very decorative, and some kale, purple kale and some Swiss chard, and those are anti-cancer uh, vegetables, but they also go in harmony with the herbs that I grow. So I could actually do uh, cha cha uh, canning of the vegetables uh, for the winter, as well as, you know, just growing and eating them. And so it was, it was just a delight just to be able to go out my front yard, get my herbs, get my, you know, vegetables and bring it into the house and cook them up and eat them and share with the with the community. So I've actually made, you know, a pot of greens and people will swear that I have some meat in them, but it's completely vegetarian. And then my lot, I we've developed a, a area where we have a composting site. So we take in the neighborhood uh, leaves and brush that they might have. Uh, we'll actually collect that and compost that down into soil in that, in that vacant lot. And you know we're we're actually growing uh, gourds and uh, other uh, uh, the three sisters in that in that lot. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.